Season 2 of Siege of Winterfell has seen five new commanders added to the roster. Arya Stark's first up, with a rage cost of 600, which is getting pretty close to the lowest. It's not quite there, but it's not far off of it. Damage coefficient of 750 means that her DPS is really quite high because, you know, the damage coefficient's medium to high, but the rage cost is really quite low. So between the two of those, you're looking at some decent DPS. Of course, there's a 12 second cooldown, like every skill, so it means she's not going to be a machine gun and, you know, just popping off skills left, right and centre, but you can almost guarantee at that rage cost that every time it is available for use, then it is going to be used. She's got a debuff which occurs sometime in the next 7 seconds, um, decreasing enemy defence by 125% for 3 seconds. It can stack, which is nice, although it's defense, you know, if you start knocking up, or knocking off, um, some large numbers, it's only going to help your case. The drawback is that it, you know, it occurs sometime in the next 7 seconds. If it doesn't go off for 6 seconds, that leaves a lot of time for the enemy to get a cleanse off in some way, shape, or form. There's plenty of champions that do that, and so, yeah, it, while it's nice enough, it's, you know, not the most impressive debuff, and with the delay, it may end up not going off at all. Total attack, though, is a nice bonus, 75%, um, which, for a free-to-play, there's not so many options for total attack, so it makes her really appealing, especially as a lord, I suppose, to, you know, get her into a versatile team and cover all bases. Infantry defense, 150%, not going to hurt to have, but yeah, as always, it's defending at a location, lasts 4 seconds, does 240 damage per tick on max 5 targets, uh, also inflicts cowardice to reduce their counter attack damage by 50%. So a few things that are really noticeable should be noted here is it's that it's a target location, so you can't fight a running battle, you're going to be wanting to stand in that damage area or draw enemies into it. But this is kind of effective, because once she's popped it, if the enemy's switched on enough to realise what it is, they're going to avoid it, which can give you some breathing room. And if they don't, then they're going to come and run you. They're going to stand and fight you while taking tick damage each time. Cowardice is also a really nice effect. I think people discount or don't realise exactly how much the counter damage adds up. So, for example, if you've got three or four six people hitting one target that's great because you're getting the added bonus of uh, pincer lovely but that one target is actually doing damage to all six people or six teams especially the counter damage every time they hit they're countering and it, it, it all adds up so that one person is actually outputting a lot of damage even if they go down reasonably quickly so by reducing the counter damage, you can take them out with a lot less, you know, damage in return. Cavalry defense of 150%, health of 150% makes a nice little uh, off tank, as well as the total attack of 75%. So of course she's not free to play, um, and now that she's in the recruitment pass, maybe a few more people will have her around. But definitely not a bad option. Um, I can definitely see her being useful. Then we're up to Barrett, who's got a rage cost of 700, slightly higher than Arya and starting to get towards the top end of the middle. Damage coefficient of 800 though, which is on the top end of the middle as well. So it's not a bad trade-off. And especially since his attack is a straight line AoE with a max of three targets. So of course the max of three targets makes it a little less appealing compared to some of the others that don't have max target. But the damage coefficient is quite high for an AoE. When you consider, you know, it'll be 2400 if you can hit three targets, which shouldn't be too hard. Once again, we're always fighting multiple targets and quite often they're bunched up. Uh, reduces target's rage by 100 as well, which is on the higher end of rage reduction, and it is quite nice, even if it is to every 12 seconds, it's still going to slow them down, especially against three targets, so yeah, it's, it's not a bad skill to pick up. 
He does, however, only have infantry, health, and defense, which isn't bad. You, you're gonna want tankiness in your teams, but obviously you're giving up on that attack. So he does have the skill damage, but he's not necessarily gonna bump you up in stats. Possibly, therefore, he should be used with the Lord team, where you've already got plenty of attack in the team, and that way you're not losing out too much, but still reaping the benefits of that skill. I can see him being pretty useful. He's not necessarily the most uh, amazing champ, but as always, we're not here to do comparisons or tier rankings. It's about assessing what they're useful for. So as far as a, you know, off tank goes, he's definitely got a place. He can stand and fight and he can put out the damage and he's got a little range with that straight line attack. Back on the pay to wins with Kevin, absolutely brilliant champion. Rage cost of a thousand, so quite high, and a delay of three seconds before the skill takes effect. But it's a damage AoE, target region, four seconds. It deals 300 damage per second to a max of five targets. So over that four seconds, you could be doing as much as 6,000 damage. Not only that, but he's got two skill effects, Dispel and Enfeeble, both of which are personal favourites of mine. 50% chance on Dispel, which, yeah, understandably so, when you're talking about five targets, you're not going to get a 100% chance to just take them all out of the fight. But, even at 50%, you should see quite a few people affected. It makes them immune to and removes all buffs that they may receive. Being a two-way swing, you don't have to worry about the timing of it so much. It'll either remove or prevent one way or the other, it should have effect. And then Enfeeble is another really tasty skill. Reduces their attack damage dealt by 35%. So rather than a straight attack percentage reduction, which is less useful the stronger the enemy is, i.e. Like if you take 100% off of someone with 400%, then that's quite useful. If you take 100% off somebody with 1200%, then it's just a lot less, you know, desirable. Whereas damage dealt reduces more the stronger they get. If they were going to hit harder, they're going to hit a little less harder. Coupled that with total attack and total health, he's just an absolute kick-ass champ. I think he's going to be potentially my new go-to. Um, gonna have to put a little bit of money into that but I think I might well do it with a smile on my face. Little old man's up next. He's looking fairly youthful still. Egbert's got a rage cost of 700 and two skill effects, no damage. Endurance which reduces counter damage taken by 80% and blessing which increases healing received by 80% and it lasts for four seconds. Both of those are really handy or make for a very durable uh, team. Counterattack damage, like we discussed earlier, is a big thing in this mode, and I don't think people realize that enough. Um, wherever you can reduce it or negate it, um, you know, prevent it, it's well worth doing because it's going to make a big difference to your sustain. Couple that with the increased healing if, you know, say an Annie's in the area, then, yeah, you're going to be pretty hard to put down, and that's never a bad thing. Not only that, but he's got 250% bow attack, so he's a really good way to get some bow stats into a team while only taking one slot. So, you're not going to have to take three along, or two along, say, to get your stats up that high if you've just got him in team. And total defense of 75% is, you know, it is defense as always, I'm not a big fan, but it is still 75% total, so it's not um, troop type specific, which makes it even, you know, a little bit more desirable than the standard defense setup. And that's us pretty well done and dusted. I know I didn't talk a lot about how they can be used in different teams, but I think most people have a pretty good idea of what a viable team is after the test season, so hopefully that's helped uh, figure out where they might slot in. I'm really happy to see these five added, and I'm looking forward to more in the future. 
have a good one guys happy gaming